All right. Cool. So I'll give you guys this little recipe thing at the end, but I'm just going to kind of go over it as I talk. And then when you look there, All right, I'll get started. So thank you for coming. I super appreciate it. So what I wanted to do, um, the first video kind of talk I did was talking about why cleansing, why it's important. Today I want to talk about how we're going to do this cleanse, the specifics, because you guys all have your little books and your products. And I just want to kind of talk you through the next few days so you kind of know A, what to expect, and we can go over any questions that you have. So what I wanted to kind of start off with is this is meant to start tomorrow, if you can, if not, like, if you want to start on Sunday, that's fine. You can kind of start how you want, just, the idea is we're all going to start together. But if some people, for example, you want to start on Sunday, that's okay. Okay. Okay? Because this book kind of gives you... the grocery store! <laughs> this book kind of gives you the guide of how to go through it, so it's really something you can kind of carry yourself through. But I find doing it with other people and being in the same place in the cleanse is very, um, almost cathartic and soothing. Because it's almost like um, kind of working out here. Sometimes I can handle these workouts because I'm like, oh, well, they're they're going through it too, yes. right? So exactly, it's the same concept. So the first four days are really what's called the initial clearing phase. And it's more getting your body kind of used to the idea that you're changing the way you're eating. So day one actually has no supplements being taken. So day one. So one of the things I kind of want to talk about was going to be kind of your guide to use through this book is on page uh, one, so there's no page numbers on here. On page four, this thing called the General Food Choices Guide. Yeah, yeah that's going to be your cheat sheet to what you can and can't eat through the days of the cleanse. So days one through four have specific foods you can eat. Actually, days one and two and then three and four switch. So throughout the whole cleanse, you can eat as much fruits and vegetables that you want. You can eat as much uh, leg legumes or kind of bean type products. You can eat as much fish as you want. The fish needs to be um, wild caught fish though. I really recommend as a healthy food choice in general to stay away from farm raised fish and um, shrimp and things like that. Just pretty toxic. Um, beverages. With that, you need to take out soda and Diet Coke and things like that. But really, the main thing you should drink is filtered water. And you can do herbal teas without caffeine. So an herbal tea needs to be more like a floral type tea, nothing that has like caffeine in it. Because caffeine is a stimulant, also is an inflammatory agent, so that's one of the things we're trying to avoid. Spices and condiments, you only can use very minimal ones. So none of the kind of traditional barbecue sauce or ketchup, because those are loaded with sugar. And we're trying to avoid sugar in this cleanse. So you're free to use vinegar, except malt vinegar, because malt vinegar has sugar in it. You're free to use olive oil, flaxseed oil, coconut oil. Um, any of those oils are fine to cook with, so you're allowed to use oil. Um, when it comes to spices in general, there's not much you can really use just because a lot of it has dairy or gluten or different things in it. You don't exactly know what's in it, especially like the blended kind of McCormick and those type of things, some of those have MSG and things like that. So I know it's kind of like, oh my gosh, there's not going to be a ton of flavor, but you can use like Himalayan sea salt, the pink salt, or that type of salt that we need some flavor to it. Okay? Um, rice and grains. So you can have rice and grains uh, for basically days one and two, and then towards the end, but in the middle of it, you're really sticking away from, from rice, and you're sticking away from things like um, oatmeal and things like that as well. So you, you can have it days one and two, so tomorrow morning you have a bowl of oatmeal, go ahead and have it, just don't put brown sugar in it, don't put that type of stuff in it. So if you need a little bit of sweetness in your oatmeal and you feel like it's kind of sad, put some blueberries in it, put some slice of banana in it, you can use stevia, so feel free to use stevia as much as you want. Um, nuts and seeds, nuts and seeds are a good snack, but you really can only have them in the beginning, because some people do have nut allergies. So one of the points of this cleanse is to remove allergens. So in day one and two, you can have that. That also includes like peanut butter, because peanut butter, almond butter, all comes from nuts. Um, dairy products, you can have for the first couple days. One and two, you can have some. You can have unsweetened milk alternatives, like rice, hazelnut, hemp, almond milk, and coconut. But towards the middle of it, a lot of those have a lot of sugar in them. Even though they say they're unsweetened, some of them do have sugar in them. So we're just sticking away from those for days three through eight. 
And then lastly, meat and poultry, you can have days one and two. You just need to make sure it's free range. And then towards the end, you can have it again too, but in the middle. So basically, the majority of this diet is a vegetarian diet. You guys all with me so far? Any questions? Okay. So, now that I've kind of freaked everyone out with what you can and can't eat, um, some of the ways that I've found for myself to get through the cleanse, um, rather than making new recipes every single day, that's really hard for me. I typically done the cleanse on my own. My hubby's done it once with me, but with his line of work, it's really hard. So what I do is I make things in the crock pot that last me most of the cleanse, and I eat that most of the time. So my two go-to hearty, really good meals, one of the recipes I'm going to give you is called the soothing red lentil soup. You put it in the crock pot, lentils just, it's amazing. So basically it has lentils, some onions, some garlic. Um, this one I do have you put mild curry powder in it, you don't have to put that in there, but I, in the recipe that I have here it does. Um, you can use organic vegetable stock, rather than making your own vegetable stock, that's a lot to ask of people. Um, some carrots, you can put a little bit of lemon juice in it and two tablespoons of salt. But anyway, it's just this huge thing you put in the crock pot, it's hearty, it's heavy. And the other thing I've done in the past when I make the soup, if I have anything like kale or any other vegetables in it, I just throw it in the crock pot. And you just basically put it on, and cook it for like eight hours, and it'll last you for five days. Well, for me, so for reason. But it's, it's <laughs> legit. And then in the back of the book, there's a recipe. So if you go all the way to the back of the book, there's a few recipes. Um, one of them is the vegetarian chili. And that one's like really good, and it lasts a really long time. This one has put some spice in it too, spices in it too, which is fine. Um, but I really enjoy that recipe, it's been really great for me. Uh, the other thing that I make religiously and I have with me at all times is I make homemade hummus. You'd be amazed how easy hummus is to make. All you do is get garbanzo beans, canned organic garbanzo beans, put it in the food processor or a blender, put a little bit of olive oil, put a little bit of other ingredients, tahini, so if you can get an organic tahini, that's great. Um, tahini's kind of in the Middle Eastern aisle of the supermarket. I've never bought tahini before. Whole Foods has it, so you can ask them if you want to go there. And um, I eat that with carrots, or celery, or something like that. So you basically just have that with you at all times, and you can kind of graze on it as much as you want. Um, so those are kind of my two things that I eat a lot of on the cleanse, and the lentils and the chili. I tend to eat for breakfast, um, one of the things I do for breakfast, which I've found really beneficial, is the cleanse powder is fine. You can drink it and make it in the shaker and do that. What I do is I make a morning smoothie out of it. So what I do is I go and buy frozen blueberries or use regular blueberries. I put the, the shake in there, I put some liquid, some water in there, I put some ice in there, some blueberries, a banana, mix it all together, and then it kind of makes it like a hearty breakfast. So it kind of counts as my breakfast as well for the morning. And I also tend to use that for like a midday snack on home. Obviously, you can't really make a smoothie for yourself um, at the office if you're at work. Um, so at the work, when I have to do it, I just bring a little shaker and I would kind of drink it out of the, the smoothie out of the shaker. Do you do that on days five and seven when you're only supposed to eat apples and pears? Uh, days five and seven isn't only apples and pears. It's also one day five and all the apples. Yeah, <laughs> let, me get, let me give that to you. Uh, so yeah, days five and seven. So I have another recipe on here that uh, works really well. It's a roasted Brussels sprouts with sweet potatoes. Super easy to make, you just buy the Brussels sprouts, cut them in half, get a bunch of sweet potatoes and cube them, and then you just cook it on a cookie sheet for like 350. Um, super great, super easy to make, and it's filling. So, um, so days five to seven is the halfway point, and days five through seven is actually when you're doing the metabolic detoxification. So at this point, you're taking way higher doses of the powder and the pills in there, you're taking those as well at that point. And this is the point where you're going to start noticing some pretty big changes. Uh, you're going to be, at this point, probably much more regular than you normally are. Um, you're going to be having kind of interesting bowel movements because you're going to be noticing they're going to potentially have a different odor to them, a little more metallic in nature because your body kind of holds on to um, toxins. And at this point, this is when you really start detoxifying them. Um, you can still have fish here. And then the guide says yeah, you have to take um, beans out at some point, but one of the things is most people that I've had doing this cleanse don't, aren't big fish eaters. So I had them do the lentil soup throughout so that they have a protein source and something that's filling. One of the things that you'll find on this cleanse is you're most likely eating much more um, whole food source items and your body's going to process it really quick. So there's a good chance you can have multiple bowel movements a day. 
So hopefully there's no shameful poopers here that struggle to do it. And if you are, I'm sorry, but it's kind of one of the things that happens in the cleanse is you just tend to be a, little, a lot more regular. Um, so you can do apples in, uh, in pairs. Um, and again, through this whole thing, you need to be drinking eight glasses of water a day. I know that's a lot. But the water counts that you use to have your shakes, it counts. It counts. Oh, it does count. It does count. We were discussing whether or not it will count. Um, but one of the things that, um, okay, so yeah, drink a lot of water. Because the whole point is the way the body eliminates toxins is peeing, pooping, and sweating. So that leads to this next question that I'm often asked can I still work out? Yes, you can still work out. One of the reasons we do this cleanse in particular is that it gives you a protein type powder that's a supplement. So you still have complex carbohydrates. Do you have a question? No. Oh, you point something out. Good. Yes. <laughs> um, so the, the things that are really important is just making sure that you have snacks available. So what I would do is to work, I would take carrots and bananas. More snacks than you think you're going to normally eat, take them with you. So take some bananas, take some apples, take some pears, take some of the hummus, take some of the carrots, um, and just have that for you throughout the day to kind of graze on as you're hungry. It's really kind of an important process of it. Um, and then I'm, I'm doing a slight variation from days 8 and 9. I'm actually doing days 8 through 15 on the reintroduction. And that brings in one of the things that I have here that I'm going to want you guys to fill out before you really get deep into the cleanse. I have a little sheet here that's written that talks a little bit about food sensitivities and food reintroduction. But more importantly, there's something called the Symptom Progress Checklist that I'm going to want you to fill out. It's basically going to have you answer questions like, um, do you have issues with your digestive tract? And you're going to score all of these different areas. Do you have ringing in your ears? Are your emotions the following way? Your energy level, your eyes. So you're going to do this at the beginning of the cleanse, and you're going to tally up your score, and then you're going to do it at the end of the cleanse, and you're just going to notice what changes have occurred in your body. So that leads me to this next thing of food sensitivities and food reintroductions. So, so one of the reasons I really love this cleanse is it gives us the ability to reintroduce potential allergens into our system to determine if we have allergies to corn, if we have allergies to soy, if we have allergies to dairy. So one of the questions one of my uh, patients asked me was, uh, can I have protein powder on this cleanse? And the answer to that is, Yes, but it has to be a special type of protein powder because a lot of protein powders are made from eggs and soy and, and dairy. One of the things that uh, would be a better choice is a pea protein from peas. That's one of the things that's allowed in this cleanse. Um, so yes, you can do protein powder, but you need to make sure that there's none of the allergens in it. So it's one of those things that if there are allergens, potential allergens in there, you're almost hindering yourself in the full benefits to determine if you have an allergy. And some of the signs of allergy symptoms are things like a um, phlegmy throat after you eat. So if you're eating for the next half hour, you're like, <coughs> that's a sign that you may have a sensitivity to something in the food. Another sign is an hour or so after you have really bad diarrhea, or you really lose stools, that's a sign that your body is also trying to kind of not want to process that. Another one is um, the next morning, if you're feeling like or fog or really just kind of hazy the next day, that's a sign that as well as having a sensitivity. Um, things like heartburn, if you're moody after you eat, that's also a good sign that you might have um, a potential allergen. Also, if you're struggling uh, sleeping, if your sleep patterns are really off after you eat certain foods, that's also, so there's just these little subtle things we don't really think about. Um, when you eliminate something from your diet and then you eat it again, let's say on uh, day nine, the corn's being reintroduced, and all of a sudden you find, gosh, I've been sleeping so well, all of a sudden I can't sleep. That's just letting you know you may have a sensitivity to it. So, what I wanted to do is have another class on day 8 um, where we kind of talk a little bit more about the reintroductions and allergies and at that point you've gotten through the bulk of the cleanse and then this is almost like the second half and then we're going to talk a little bit more about the reintroduction and all of that type of um, kind of options. Do you guys have any questions for me at all? No? Alright, so one other thing I talked a little bit about in the video that if you want to do to kind of start off with is this little program diary that you can kind of talk about why you chose to start the cleanse. These are kind of nice things to do tonight. Um, there's going to be days that you're going to be struggling with this a little bit. The first couple days are the hardest, um, especially with the sugar thing, because if all of a sudden you're eliminating sugar from your diet, you're looking, it's going to be hard, I'm going to be honest. 
So one of the things that's going to help with the craving is similar to a smoking sensation, which will stop smoking. Exercise, so work out, be active. It's going to help get through that. Um, today, today I'm feeling like finally I decided to try. One of the things of this plan is you can decide to try foods that you normally wouldn't eat. So if you go to the grocery store or the market, you get some fruits and vegetables that you don't normally eat. That's really great. One of the things we're trying to eliminate from this diet as well as acidity. So you can put some lemon juice on certain things if you want, but staying away from oranges and grapefruits and things like that, they have a high level of acidity. Acidity is um, inflammatory in the body. So the other part of this plan is eating all these fruits and vegetables to give you more basic or more alkaline in your body so that um, you're not nearly as acid. Um, and then there's also uh, this one here today, there's my energy levels to be. Today I learned about, and the one that I really like, and I kind of did usually do this one at the end, is I'm proud of myself for it. And I'm usually proud of myself for getting through this because I feel like super accomplished and really great. And then one of the great things at the end too is what your top 10 goals are. Because one of the things that happens in this cleanse that we dread and it's hard. The reason people are crazy enough to do cleanses every year is you feel so great at the end. You're like, oh my gosh, I have so much more energy. I don't need the coffee. I'm sleeping so much better. I'm not as, you know, eight years sore in the morning because all of a sudden your inflammation is so low that your body's not presenting with as many symptoms. So that's one of the reasons I really love these. So I think that's kind of a good way to, to kind of start is you know kind of putting your goals and guide in here. And then the other reason I like this cleanse is the guide kind of gives you a step by step how to do everything. And then I'm just kind of giving you some ancillary things to kind of help you get through it. Um, so using A making sure you drink the water, the lentils and chili recipes are really great that you can kind of take all week with you to work, they're easily transportable. The lentils and chili don't really get soggy per se, so you can just um, now, if you're adventurous and you want to cook, there's all these great recipes. Um, another option, and I don't know if this is something you're interested in, is doing a recipe share with, amongst people in the clan, where basically one person says, okay, I'll make double the recipe of the chili, and you can make double the recipe of the lentils, and we can swap that in half. So that's something you want to do. Uh, a couple of people you know, expressed interest in that. Um, we're going to be kind of putting our progress, if you're all okay with it, on the TPS page, because I was originally going to make our own Facebook page. And then Nat said, no, I want the members of the gym to kind of see what this is like, what I'm experiencing. So I'm going to be posting on the TPS page, like, look, here's my food. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to say that. Yeah, we're totally more, if you're comfortable. I'm going to be great today. But like, what I'll do is I'll be like, you know, today this is what I have for breakfast. You know, I'll like have pictures of the fruit and fruits that I eat, things like that. So, again, Fruits are great for this whole thing. Things that have high antioxidant things like blueberries. Blueberries are really good for you. So if you want to do like a lot of blueberries, that's really great. Um, one of the things I like to kind of remind people is you're choosing to do this cleanse. So don't feel like, oh, I can't eat that. It's, you're choosing not to eat that right now. So it's, it's a much different concept than I can't eat it and I'm choosing not to eat it. It's a subtle difference, but it's a big difference when you're like cranky and crabby and you're like, ah. I'm cho you're making the conscious choice to not do it. So, <laughs> not that you can't. You can't eat it. You're just choosing not to. Um, I feel this way because I chose. I chose to feel this way. Proud of myself. I'm the power. <laughs> um, are there any concerns or anything that you're like is kind of screaming out at you that you're dying to ask? I'm really proud of all of you for taking this on. This is like really big. It's just gonna. Everyone that's done this in some way changed their relationship with food in a really powerful way. And, and it, you made it to a 30 day cleanse once. Oh, you've done it. You've done it. Okay. If you've done a 30 day, a 10 day is actually really easy. I did a 30 day too, and that was hard. Um, this is not to say that this isn't going to be challenging and this isn't going to kind of be different. But what I like is the products that come with it really help kind of speed up the detoxification process. So in 10 days, you can really see the same benefits as someone did with 30 days. So I'm like, well, if I can do it for 10 days, why do it? Um, some of the side effects you will see with the, the cleanse is a lot of times, the first couple days, you might be a little cranky. That's normal. Be compassionate to yourself and your fellow cleansing people. Um, yeah. Uh, you might be. It's going to be okay. This will get through next Yeah. Most people are going to find that you're way more hungry than you thought you were going to be. So just make sure you have more food than you plan because you're going to be really, really hungry. Um, so with the lentils and the, the chili, it's hearty and it's filling, but you're going to be hungry again pretty quick. So just maybe double up what you bring. You can eat as much as you want. There's no limits on the quantity of food. It's just what the food is. So if you want to have 10 bowls of chili or 10 bowls of lentils in a day, you're welcome to. Alright, so this 
The point of this cleanse isn't to lose weight. This isn't a diet for weight loss. But one of the things that happens for most people is they lose quite a bit of weight just because of all of a sudden the, your relationship with food and what you're eating is different. So rather than having to tell me about the cherries at night, they're like, oh, I guess I'll have some kale chips. A little different, but... Yeah, and that, this is also a supplement that as well. So this is... One of the reasons this cleanse is great for a gym setting is that it gives you the fuel if you still want to work out. If you're doing a, like, juice cleanse or a water cleanse, you're going to be uh, start having muscle breakdown and uh, muscle wasting. This cleanse should not give you that. Again, if you are working out and you are just starting to feel a little lightheaded or dizzy, um, slow down. Another option is to kind of bring a shake filled with this and kind of have that before the workout so that you feel at least like you're, you kind of have um, the energy you need. And you should use all the powder through, right by the end of the, top, the cleanse, you should probably be almost out of the powder. Um, again, you can use stevia as much as you want. I'm going to put this video on YouTube if there's anything that you guys have any questions on. And um, if you have concerns, reach out to me. I will be in Puerto Vallarta on vacation next week, but I'm going to be doing this with you guys on vacation. It's easy on vacation because I can have fruit for the morning breakfast, I can have my shakes, I can have fish, so I can, I can make it work and I can grow vegetables. So that's the other thing when you you're bound to have events you're going to go to with friends and family this week. It's not like, oh, 10 days, I can't leave the house. Okay, life continues on. You can still go to restaurants, but you have to be smart about your food choices. So just know when you go to a restaurant, you don't have to order just what's on the menu. You can say, look, um, I would like to order some grilled mushrooms with uh, some spinach and some broccoli. I know it doesn't sound amazing, especially if you're like a really fancy restaurant, but those are options. So that's what I'm going to do. I go to Mexico, I'm going to be like, look, I want some broiled fish with a side of green beans. They'll make it for you. All restaurants will. So you just do the best you can. It's not... Try to follow this as much as you can. As it helps from other people. Caffeine is to be eliminated. Alcohol is to be eliminated. Now, if you say, look, um, if I have to stop alcohol and caffeine, I can't do the cleanse. Okay, then continue to have your drinks and your coffee. Like, you're still going to get benefits out of it. But the maximum benefit is to kind of follow this. Um, kind of as a Cool? Yeah. I was expecting a lot of questions. Y'all yeah, are good. Alright, so I will give you... So I accidentally printed out a page on the back of this that I kind of X'd out. Um, that's not for this cleanse, but this has that lentil and um, Brussels sprouts recipe. You share? Okay. And then here is that. And I will also post this so that other pages are on there on my... Um, uh, like on the TPS page, so you can have access to it. Oh, this really good fun. Do you? And share them. We, we eat a lot of like, this anyway. So, and me too. Like, I continue to eat this way most of the time. Um, so, I mean, if you have recipes to share, um, there's a couple of people that are super interested and really into cooking. So, they were the ones that were talking about the meal shares. Um, yeah, you're, you're good. But some other people, like, we got a couple of people that are single, and they're like, I don't want to do this. I'm doing it as a single guy, too, because I'm working. So, um, yeah, have fun with it. Explore some new foods. Um, be compassionate to yourself. And be proud of yourself for doing it. This is, not most people do these kind of things. So if you are doing it, it says something about yourself. A good thing. I know. It's happening all over the office this week. Everybody's doing it. It's spring. It's spring for most people. So, day eight, I don't know off the top of my head what date that is, but that's the day I would like to do the reintroduction class. Next Saturday. So, next Saturday. So, how's next Saturday? Is that what we're here? So, we all get together and kind of talk about where you're at, where things are going, and talk a little bit more about the re reintroduction. At that point, everyone's going to be pretty much in the same place, even if you start a day later, it's not a big deal. Um, so, ideally, the start is Saturday, but if you guys want to start on Sunday, that's okay. Do you have a preference on time? Well, I'm So an evening work best for everybody? Well, Saturday. <laughs> well, Saturday, <laughs> so Saturday like at 7? The Saturday at 7? Yeah. Would that be okay like around 7 o'clock for you? That's why I'm okay. This is what we did. Okay. <laughs> but she might have a life. So 7 work for you? Uh, you're good. <laughs> okay. So how about we just get together Saturday at 7? We can. We can. Well, pain and champagne is right about 
when we're all done with all of this. So that's like our celebration of getting through this. So <laughs> you're gonna get trapped and wondering. Yeah. You're like, oh, oh I gotta get so much sugar. Yeah. I already do. Um, so yeah, let's do that, and then um, I'll be really active more so than I normally am on the TPS page of this. Feel free to comment and be part of it. If you don't want it out there and you want to keep it to yourself, that's okay. Feel free to like personally email me. Um, I'm probably not going to have a lot of text access, but you can me email me, message me on Facebook, and I'm pretty accessible. Um, when I'm back, you can't text me, but I don't know how to make text. It's going to work when I'm done in Mexico, but I know my Facebook and email. Um, yeah, cool. Well, thanks for coming. Thank you. And uh, have fun. And yeah, I'm excited. Let me give you, did I give you a copy of that already? Yes. I did, okay. Perfect, with time to spare.